Let's say you wanna go weekend camping, but you don't wanna invest a lot into battery systems and solar and all that stuff. You could charge this up, take it with you. AC, we're gonna see if it fires up. The Anchor 757 portable power station really stands out amongst the competition. It is the longest lasting power station on the market and it boasts some pretty impressive features. In this video, I'm gonna go over all of its features and specifications. I wanna find out what it can power, how long it will last, and what it takes to overload it. But first, I'd like to thank Anchor for sponsoring this video and sending their new 757 powerhouse portable power station for me to test and review. At the heart of this power station lies 1,229 watt hours of premium lithium iron phosphate battery cells. For all of you RVers out there, that's a little over 100 amp hours of battery. These are also known as LFP or LIFEPO4 cells. The battery cells are rated for 3,000 complete charge cycles. You could fully charge and discharge the power station every day for eight years before seeing any noticeable reduction in battery capacity. Anchor also backs their 757 power station with a five-year warranty. It will even outlast the warranty of your other electronic devices. With 3,000 full charge cycles and a 50,000 hour electronics rating, this is the longest lasting portable power station on the market. Aside from the long cycle life that lithium iron phosphate cells provide, they're also very safe. LFP does not have the thermal runaway issues that other lithium ion chemistries are known for. That's exactly why they're so prevalent in the RV industry and they're gaining popularity in electric vehicles. Recently, Tesla announced that it's switching to LFP batteries in their standard range vehicles. Lithium iron phosphate is the safest lithium chemistry on the market. Next, we have fast recharging. It will recharge from zero to 80% in just one hour. Hyperflash recharge uses bi-directional inverter technology with a 92% charge conversion rate. The 757 Powerhouse has a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. This means you can power home appliances such as portable fridges, fans, coffee makers, microwaves, and more. It also offers 2400 watts of surge power, which is great for starting up heavy loads like this bench grinder. Now, as for the construction of this power station, I'm really impressed. It's very, very rugged. It doesn't creak, it doesn't squeak. The 757 is made from high quality materials, including this automotive grade aluminum frame. It should survive many years of camping and being moved from place to place. And it looks great, especially these blue vents. They add a nice accent to its overall appearance. The 757 powerhouse is a worry-free power supply for three to five day trips and unexpected electrical outages. All of this power capacity does come with some heft. The unit weighs in at 43.9 pounds, but the two handles and sturdy construction make it easy to carry and maneuver. The rubber feet keep it firmly planted and protect whatever surface you set it on. It means when you plop it down on something, it's got some grip and some, some protection from vibration. Quite impressed with it. On the front of the 757, you're gonna find a nice big display where you can monitor input and output power, charge mode, active ports, remaining charge time and capacity, alerts, like the temperature alarm, and the power saving status. The power saving mode will turn the power station off if it detects that the connected devices no longer require power. So you can charge up all of your devices, and when the last device is fully charged, the power station will turn itself off to save battery. The button to the right will turn the backlight on so you can see what's being displayed. At the top, there is an LED bar with three brightness settings. I just like playing with it. I like that. This is very handy in the dark and as a backup light source that will run for days. In fact, right here it tells me on low it uses two watts, medium it uses three watts, and high it uses four watts. So I'd have to do the math, but right now it says 99.9 .9 hours of runtime remaining. You could really use this as a safety light or a night light on the inside or outside of your RV without really diminishing the battery capacity. As for ports, on the left, there is one car socket with an on-off button. In the middle, there are four USB-A ports, two USB-C ports. One of those USB-C ports provides 60 watts and the other provides 100 watts of power. On the right side, we have six 120 volt AC ports with an on-off button. These are powered by that 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And it's best to leave these power buttons off when they're not in use to prevent unnecessary battery drain. The main way to recharge the unit is of course with its included power cord. 
You can charge the 757 with up to 300 watts of solar power using the Anchor 625 solar panels. I don't have the panels to test out, but Anchor does have a solar kit and I'll link to it in the description below. On the back of the power station, you have all of your power inputs. It features that 1000 watt AC input that I mentioned earlier and car and solar DC inputs. The solar input supports up to 300 watts. There's also a handy overcharge protection button right in the middle. Anchor also offers the 521 and 535 powerhouse models with the same long lasting batteries, but in smaller capacities. So that's it for the features and specifications. Now it's time to take it out and see what it can do. Let's go. This is an eight inch bench grinder, which is powered by a three quarter horsepower electric motor. From past experience, I know that this has a pretty high startup load. I don't know what the wattage is. I'm hoping that this will tell me. So at the campground that I'm currently working at, we have this barn out here. The electrical work hasn't been finished and we haven't had electricity out here for about two months. I have the grinder for sharpening lawnmower blades and shaping various pieces of metal, like stakes for the trees and things like that. One of the other really common things we need to do is inflate tires and that's what this air compressor is for. So this is another electric motor load. I'm kind of curious to see how it handles it and what this requires for power, especially during startup. Well, let's find out. So this is a one horsepower motor. It looks like it can do 2.3 cubic feet a minute. No problem, fires it right up. You can see it's already at 600 watts, 700 watts, slowly climbing. So after several days of playing with this, my only gripe with it is I wish the display would stay on longer. But that's only because I'm trying to record it. It doesn't actually make a difference if you're just using it normally pushing 90 pounds. Well, that might be kind of the max load. Seems to be hovering right around 800, 830, 100 to 110 pounds. So before it completely shuts off, one of the things with air compressors is once they're up to pressure, it's much harder to start the compressor. So now if we watch, will it start it even though it's pretty much max pressure? Yep, no problem. Right back up. It looks like a three quarter horse and a one horsepower motor are no problem for this. Normally Sasha and I are out camping more, but right now we're of course at a campground and I found a bunch of uses for this. A couple of days ago, we had the power go out for the afternoon. I don't know why. We had some guests renting the recreation center that's here on site. It's a really nice air conditioned space. There's a refrigerator, the kitchen. With the power out, of course the AC was down. So we were able to open the garage doors manually. We put in this gigantic fan to help move some air through there and keep them cool. We were also able to plug their fridge in, which means they were able to That's use awesome. it freely for the rest of the day. They had a ton of food in there. It was completely packed. With 100 degree weather, it would have been a real shame to have them lose all their food just because the power went out. We say the family reunion. I was able to plug the anchor power station in and run yeah. both the refrigerator and the fan for probably about three hours. It was great because we didn't want to have to run a noisy, smelly generator because we had about 75 people there that were paying money to rent the facility. So this guy packs a lot of power and along with that comes some weight. I think it's 43.9 pounds. Let's just call it 44 pounds. So it's, it's fairly heavy, but it's still very maneuverable. I have no problem lifting and loading it into the, well, right now I'm using a golf cart. The handles on this are very rugged. Easily carried with one hand, one or the other. I also like these open gaps, so you can pick it up this way, however you want. It's plenty of space to carry it. It's crazy to be using a heater and a hair dryer on a 100 degree day. This hit about 1400 watts. Now I'm gonna put this hair dryer on low. Now we're pulling 1600 watts, 1573. It hasn't tripped out yet, that's a good sign. Now I'm gonna put it on high and that should trip it. Yep, yeah, so it hit 2568 watts and it shut off. I'm gonna turn everything back to off. Well, my suspicion is that it probably takes a minute or two for it to cool down and reset maybe. Or maybe I had to unplug. Yeah, it's staying on now. So I just, I think I had to unplug the devices maybe to kind of make it happy. 
It's been a few days and I've been thinking about different ways that I can test this thing out. So I wanted to see if I could plug my RV's 30 amp cord using one of these adapters into the power station and then try running the appliances one at a time. So I'll be able to run the microwave and the hair dryer, but I'm not sure about the AC. It's about 100 degrees today and I've had to run the air conditioner nonstop. But just for this test, I'm gonna shut it off, I'm gonna plug everything into this and then we're gonna go inside and see how it works. I'm gonna pull my power cord back underneath here. I'm gonna turn this back to just plain old propane because I don't want it to be affecting the wattage numbers. I figured I would bring the power station in here and that way I'm in the shade and it's much cooler in here than it is outside. So I'll just plug my, my plug in right from the camper into here. So that's just fan. And then if I go to AC, we're gonna see if it fires up. Look at that. It's running my AC. Blowing cold air. 1100, 1200. And it's saying it can run my air conditioner for about 0.8 hours, 0.7. That's a huge load for this. It's pretty impressive that it can do it. I think that's very cool. And let me turn the AC off. I just hit start. So that's running fine. And that's drawing four, and you can just hear it. The fans kicked on. They're fairly quiet. Certainly not uh, very loud. Over here, I can barely hear it. So yeah, it looks like it's drawing about 1300 watts, 1400 watts. Let's say you wanna go weekend camping, but you don't wanna invest a lot into battery systems and solar and all that stuff. In theory, you could charge this up, take it with you, and you would have enough power to run a coffee pot, 759 watts, a hair dryer for five or 10 minutes, a microwave, or even like a little electric induction cooktop. This really is a perfect power alternative for people who are looking for uh, just temporary power. You know, maybe use it for the weekend, you go home and charge it. Like what we had happen at the campground, a uh, power outage for like four hours, and this was enough to keep all the freezers running and things like that. So it's been very, very useful. I really like the fact that this is lithium iron phosphate. It comes with a five year warranty and it will probably last well over a decade with normal usage. So I would say it's a very good device to kind of keep around and use for emergency situations or for camping. I can't possibly demonstrate all of the uses for it, but anywhere you might need electricity, this seems to want to handle it. Now, of course, the Anchor Powerhouse is going to be able to power all of your regular electronics, your phones, any kind of things like an iPad, Apple Watch. This is a rechargeable power pack. This is uh, some microphones, cell phone. All of this is plugged in and charging. It's pulling about 58 watts. I love the fact that this has two USB-C chargers. One is a 100 watt, the other one is a 60 watt. Both of our laptops will take 100 watt USB-C. It'll also work with 60 watts, of course. So we could actually run both of our laptops off of this with no problem. And then it has the additional four USB-A ports, which means that you can plug in four other devices pretty easily. I gotta say, after three weeks of playing with the Anchor 757, I'm really happy with it. I think it's a great product. It's done everything that I've asked of it. It's running my AC. I'm really happy to see that Anchor's using lithium iron phosphate. I think it's a superior chemistry, especially when it comes to safety and longevity. If you're looking for more information on the Anchor 757 or any of their other products, I'm gonna leave links to everything down below. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.